What's up, everybody? Welcome to the View from James Sound podcast edition. This is the December 2018 View from James Sound podcast recording. I'm sitting down with TCC President Rob Roach, GM of Sales AJ Petrarca, and Latin American Operations Manager Javier Fernandez. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Ben. This is probably the, the, the collectively best dress we've all done for a podcast recording yet, I, I would have to say. <laughs> By accident. We got cameras now, so we got to, you know, shape up. Yeah, this is the this is the first uh, episode, or this might be the trial episode. We'll see how it goes. Of uh, doing some video behind the podcast recording too. I know everyone's anxious to see our faces while we're doing this too. So, got the we have we have George and Zach from Kettlebottom here, doing a nice uh, video session for us. Yeah, I'd like to go back to showing up in my pajamas, please. <laughs> um, that would be good. Yeah, I give the uh, I give the college shirt maybe an episode or two, and we'll be right back to the yeah. I don't know about this dressing up stuff. I only got a couple more outfits in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> you need a whole new wardrobe here. Um, so th- thanks for sitting down this morning. Obviously, appreciate your guys' time. Um, I guess starting off, what's uh, what's going on? Anything pertinent? I think most important piece of business. Uh, happy belated birthday to Mr. Aja Petrarca. Oh, thanks for reminding me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Well... I don't know what's go- what's going on right now. I mean, we're coming up to Christmas year end. Uh, a lot of uh, people shut their books down at the end of the year. They got a fiscal calendar, so there is um, you know quite a bit of activity. Whether it's um, you know giving up inventories, um, buying less typically, um, maybe uh, some producing partners might have some fire sales to get inventories out. For us. Um, <clears throat> Our fiscal year end is in the uh, is in the summertime, so we don't have to worry about it too much, and uh, you know, so we're, we'll take advantage of any deals that we can get in December and uh, sort of uh, pace ourselves to the Christmas holiday. But as far as TCC macro level, we've been very busy through October, November. December is also shaping up to be a pretty busy month, so overall demand is is, is very good. Yeah, it seems like definitely a different. December or Christmas time compared to last year with all the seems like a lot of stuff going on globally with tariff concerns and supply shortages and all stuff we'll get to in a minute but it seems definitely it's not just about unloading inventories this year it seems like it's kind of taking a, a bigger picture of what's going on globally and trying to make the best decisions for your business absolutely last December was crazy it was uh you know we were we were in that massive upturn in the in the stock market and Demand was through the roof, and, and and manufacturing was crazy. So we actually saw it strengthen through October, November, December, where it typically goes. You know, October, November are strong, and December is weaker than the prior two months. So, yeah, it's uh, this year um, is surprisingly a good November and December, which we we are usually our slowest months of the year. I remember last December, us at least on the sales side, we're ready to take the second half of the month off because that's just what you do <laughs> the second half of December. But that didn't happen no, <laughs> last no. December. It was it was pretty bonkers, which is which is good. Honestly, on the sales and even like the, you know, product management size, there hasn't been a break in in two years. I mean, it's uh, it's it's stressful. It's it's wearing on all of us. I think because, you know, we're not just the brick and mortar distributor that has you know drums and and bags on the shelf that goes out and sells what we have we're managing the buy side we're managing the sell side and honestly the stressful part has been the buy side and nobody (laughs) seems to be able to get their plants running right there's been environmental disasters there have been geopolitical situations there's been tariffs i mean it's it's it'd be stressful, a, very, be a, very stressful. It'd be a big deal if there was one of those things, but now you got five or six going on at the same time. It's trying to put the equation together and figure out what's best. And one good thing is the one aspect uh, logistics has seems to have improved a little bit. You know, we're not that's not a, a daily conversation as it was just a few months ago, so that seems like it's improved a little bit. I think on the trucking side, you're right, AJ. Um, on the rail side, we've seen a lot of backups and problems now. I don't know exactly why we're seeing it, but we're seeing heavy delays in our in our rail cars. Um, but yeah, that's a, you know that's a good point. It's um, it, probably probably folks shifting from truck deliveries to rail deliveries just causing more congestion. I'd imagine. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, but routes that usually were 15 days now are 35 days, or routes that they're 10 days now are 40 something days. And, yeah. And yeah. It's tough. It, it, it's push and pull because you know you can't get a truck, you can't get trucks on time, you can't get um, drivers, and so you everybody seems to eventually find the alternate uh, transport mode, and it seems like it's really caught up all at once. 
and the traffic is horrendous. And I guess for you in uh, Latin America, South America, what are you starting to see kind of high level with the attitude and activity with stuff? Is it busy? Are people starting to look at vacations and holidays and things like well, that? Or? Well, for me, November is usually slow because by the time it arrives, nobody wants stuff arriving in December. By December, these two weeks are busy because they're, they're, they're one material arriving in January. So it should be a really good December for my region. And then with, with the holiday season, is it longer, shorter than the U.S.? Is people take a little bit oh, more much, time Oh, much, much longer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely much longer. We're all suckers in the U.S.A. <laughs> yeah, so like, like people leave like mid-month and then take three or, or a month, you know, for three or four weeks. Also, a lot of plane uh, maintenance is going to be on the last two weeks of the year. So I have a few customers down south that are doing plane maintenance on the third week or second week of uh, January. So should we say Happy New Year now because we might not see you for a couple weeks? Uh, you know yeah, what yeah, I'll be going home in a few weeks. Yeah, so Very nice. Uh, so I think one of the biggest topics still going on is obviously the situation with the Rhine River uh, in Europe, which impacts everyone with production facilities on the Rhine River, people that rely on it, uh, rely on it for supply chain, moving, moving um, raw materials and, and finished goods up and down the river which obviously grows to impact the, the world as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. So obviously that's still a concern. The river is still low. Um, what are you guys seeing with, with that um, direct results from the Rhine River being low and then kind of downstream effects seem to be continuing? A tremendous impact, you know, for us. Um, you know, we've got a lot of producing partners in, in Europe, uh, Germany, <clears throat> along the Rhine River. Um, you know, just in the last couple of weeks, we've seen uh, a lot of rain. So um, it, it, if anything, it's stabilized is really what we're hearing. And there is some um, one third um, level barges moving. Uh, so that's triple the cost to move any raw material or finished goods. So the costs are, are there, you know, we're, we're hearing that, you know, our producing partners there are, are you know, if they haven't declared force majeure, are, are restricting availability um, or at sometimes wanting to move uh, product via um, other transport modes. Again, rail is, is crippled there because of uh, their moving raw materials to rail and finished goods to rail. And, um, you know, it, it's probably going to be impact uh, through the first quarter. I mean, even if we continue to get this rain, a lot of it gets locked up in snow in the mountains. So I, I think that normal Rhine River conditions, April, May, maybe, you know, so there's going to be continuing impacts. And with the restrictions on trade in the USA from China, a lot of the raw materials are now coming from or, or finished goods or whatever you need are coming from USA, EU. So that's pushing the supply and demand fundamentals on a lot of uh, key raw materials for a lot of uh, us and our customers. Yeah, that's a good point I think you made the other day with it's, you know, now winter. So, you know, we, we may be a couple more months until that snow starts to melt and, and replenishes the Rhine. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, we, we had a similar, or we, or the Rhine had a similar situation in 2017 as well, just not to the extent now. I think this is the worst ever. Yeah, I just yeah. wonder if there's going to be a trend going forward. I know? think, uh, yeah, BASF is already making... Um, you know, plans to, to how to deal with this. And, and, and the other companies that are, you know, obviously impacted by the Rhine River need to plan on this potentially happening again. And th that's a good point, AJ. You know, it's, uh, it's already happened twice in the last, say, half a decade. Um, here we go again. And uh, so what's the plan in the future? Yeah, it's almost something you'd really never think you would need a contingency for. You have this river that's massive, that's a big center of trade and in industry in Europe and all of a sudden the river goes empty you know now what it's, it's almost something you, you wouldn't think you'd need a contingency plan for yeah 100 but, year but old plants on this river you know depending on that river um so it's had a lot of impacts on the chemical company because of like I said a lot of our producing partners are right there in the EU so and we've seen some of those companies have to slash profit projections and things like that going well into 2019 you know unfortunately obviously no matter what you want to see businesses thrive and, and grow and it's it's Disappointing to see almost that that it's obviously a situation. Just just take a look at your you know financials and your logistics spend just tripled. You yep. know, yep. I mean that really cuts your profits immediately. And I think what, obviously one of the other big topics going on is the the tariff battle. I guess you could say between the U.S. and China. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we saw a little bit of let up with the G20 summit last week where we're. Uh, Trump and China agreed to push the tariffs out 90 days, so we have a little bit more time, at least with only the 10% margin. Um, how's that impacting? And obviously, 
relatively good news, and I guess we'll continue to see what, what, what continues to come out of it. Well, I think I, I know the answer, but the first question that popped into my mind is 90 days from what? From uh, January 1st. Yeah. From January 1st. So yeah. now we've really got 120 days. So. Yeah. From, from today. Yeah. From, yeah. Well, from when they had the discussion mm -hmm. on December 1st or 2nd, we've got 120 days. So um, <clears throat> I, I honestly thought it was from the dinner mm -hmm. forward. So I think that, you know, for us, it's important to know because mm -hmm. yeah. if you buy anything in China right now, if you got 90 days mm -hmm. to get here, depending on departure, you might be okay. But if you got 120 days, you're still under that 10%. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, we found looking worldwide for other, we vetted other producers, and even with the 25%, we're better off buying in China um, some of the raw materials. So um, it's interesting. You know, I think AJ mentioned the other day he expects the 10% eventually to go away. Whoa. What happens then? We're back to the same old, same old. Um, yeah. But it was interesting to see why this juxtaposition is happening. Fentanyl. Who would have thought fentanyl? It's killing people in America, left and right, in heroin. And that was the first thing that was brought up was, you know, start enforcing the production and sale of fentanyl to the United States. I mean, I thought that was really interesting. You don't think about these things when you're in that narrow focus of our industry but personally I have you know mothers and and fathers that I know who who have lost their children to to heroin in this epidemic so it's a much bigger picture I guess is my point point. You know, obviously we look at it from kind of a narrow scope with how it's going to impact the chemical industry but it is amazing how many other industries are affected and obviously way way you know beyond what just the chemical industry is yeah I mean, it, you know, it seemed, it's, at some point, I, I don't like it for my business, but I also think that at this point, it, it, it is necessary to, uh, to, to set the rules um, or set, you know, more defined rules with our engagement in China. And I think a lot of other countries will probably follow suit. And how are you seeing that impacting business in, in South America, Latin America? Has it not really made a difference? Is it? No, not really, because they're used to, they're used to the imports or from Middle East, Asia, and, and the tariffs there. Actually, it's a dumping market. So a lot of the, a lot of the products are, 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 are going there at lower prices. I mean, that's, you know, that's China's history right there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a lot of countries' history, you know, is uh, Latin America. Oh, we got access, just dump it there. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the Latin American buyers know this and take advantage of it, and uh, and the transit time is not bad. It's like 20, 25 days. It's, it's to not, to from, from, from to, China. Yeah, from China to uh, Pacific, Pacific to coast. coast. So, so in some ways, that could obviously benefit them. Yeah, yeah. The same is happening in the EU. We're hearing. I mean, there aren't the restrictions of trade that there are for the United States right now and tariffs there. So, a lot of the European producers are now up in arms because you're seeing products come in 20, 30, even 50% below market and, and, they're, and, they're, and even cost from China. And just, they don't have the opportunity to now send it to the US or as much. So they're flooding the European market with it. What, what's gonna happen there? I mean, there's obviously gonna be a reaction at some point. And like you said, if the tariffs just decide to go away one day, obviously that whole thing changes and you, know, you gotta try to plan somehow, but it's tough when the you know, stuff could change overnight. We're back to square one. Yeah. Well, you know. I mean, right now Chinese producers are, are lowering prices on a lot of things to, to try to offset the tariffs. So when and if the tariffs go away, the Chinese are going to be even that much cheaper, you know, at a 0% tariff rate or back to the original tariff. So that's going to upset some things, too, when the, when the tariff... The Chinese government as well is giving, you know, drawback, you know, or mm -hmm. they're giving, I don't know exactly the term. It's they, they call it a government tax rebate. Tax rebate. So... In order to combat our tariffs, they're giving money to the producers to export. So all of the increases from the last nine months have been or for the from the year have been wiped out. So we are right now. So all the increase. So we are at, at, at levels that two or three hundred dollars cheaper on some products. Mm. And everybody knows that Chinese plants are built for basically worldwide supply. They're not domestic demand and we've seen the result of this when we've sort of shut off a good bit of trade with China they don't have the robust domestic demand that everybody sort of have been you know sort of 
figuring would consume a lot of this. I mean, there's a lot of raw materials and, and chemicals that are made in China that there's enough there to supply the world demand twice. Yep. Makes no sense. Yep. So China has to get a plan and, uh, you know, sometimes you have to get a little aggressive to force them to, to make a plan to, to stop being uh, the lowest price, you know, uh, chemical dumping uh, country of the world. Yeah, I think that's a good natural transition into talking about what is going on with, with pricing for December. I think one thing we were just talking about the other day, Rob, is how it seems like material pricing is becoming less dependent on what the raw material pricing is and more on just supply and demand fundamentals. It's, it's kind of gone more that way. Um, so what's, what's going on with pricing kind of across the board with, with raw materials and things we're seeing? I think a lot of things are still driven by supply and demand, but we're seeing you know, there's other products that are uh, obviously reflective of their cost basis, whether it's ethylene, propylene, natural gas, oil, um, et cetera. And uh, so we're seeing, you know, we are seeing some downside uh, on some products, um, especially based on propylene, which we've seen a lower November 10 cents down and a lower December 5 cents down. So things like oxo alcohols are seeing uh, some price erosion because they're directly tied to pro propylene. Um, and then, but the oxo um, alcohols that are used to make esters or plasticizers, plasticizer prices are e even up um, because of the Rhine River situation and, um, and the fact that we depend on supply from uh, China, um, you know, other Asia, Europe as well. So um, methanol, again, you know, seasonally, You'd expect methanol prices to go up, and natural gas has been up what some thirty percent in the mm -hmm. U.S. A lot of the methanol production now is in the U.S. that supplies the U United States and, and, and the Americas. But the opposite, uh, you know, I think Methanex was down uh, fifteen, Southern Chemical down some fourteen or so, uh, no eleven. Southern down eleven. Eleven. So, you know, even a seasonal product that you know, should be in high demand right now for, especially in the, in the northern part of, uh, I guess, north of the Mason-Dixon line where we get snow and ice and rain yep. this time of year. You'd expect the price of methanol to be going up and, and, and the natural gas cost going up, but yet it's going down. Um, I sent the, I sent the methanol uh, decrease letter to one of our <laughs> seasonal customers. They said, are you sure? Did you mean up? <laughs> no, but... You know, uh, glycols as well. I mean, you know, AJ, you can probably comment on glycols. Uh, they're down. Yeah, yeah. MEG settled down two and DEG down three. And that's mainly driven by the Asia contract price. You know, things are just uh, just down in China. Ethylene's down. Um, you know, so even though it, it is a seasonal, you know, there's a, it is a seasonal product, you know, prices are going down for, for December, which is uncommon. Mm hmm Yeah, and it, you know, many of our other products, you know, a lot of the ones that we're dependent on, you know, the Ryan area or, or, or China are, are going up or are still limited demand or limited availability, high demand and driving the prices higher. So I guess where we were seeing more of a upper momentum now, it's a mix, if you will. Would you agree, Javier? Of course. Yeah. hundred <laughs> um, percent. Yeah. It was amazing. I put this obviously sheet together. We kind of follow as we do these recordings and Usually stuff's oh up ten cents here, down four cents here. This one was like up a dollar twenty, down sixty five cents. Like just yeah. one of the most out there, you know, kind of monthly report or summary that I put together it was it's it's amazing to see. And obviously the, the stock market was a little bit more flat overall this month. There's obviously some peaks and valleys, but as a whole it was flat. Whereas it's it's obviously kind of been on a downward trend for a couple months prior, which is maybe good to see it, it flatten out a little bit. Yeah, I mean it, it's never good for your four hundred one k, but it's you know. I sort of expected, I mean, I think it overheated a little bit and, um, you know, the, the, the trade imbalance or the trade war, or if you will, is, is having an impact on obviously tech, you know, uh, Apple makes their phones in China and China no longer wants Apple phones in China. So they're pushing that out. And, um, you know, um, you look overall, I think, uh, chemical companies would be a pretty good pick right now in terms of a stock mix. Um, most of the integrated chemical companies should be doing pretty well, at least on a, a, a portion of their portfolio. So, um, but yeah, the, the stock market's been driving sort of a, a range bound um, heart attack drop one day, <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of momentum up another day. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little sketchy.
Yeah, and talking, I guess, a little bit now about featured products and, and some maybe some new products. Obviously, we do have all, all the seasonal products, methanol and, and glycols, uh, with, with prices kind of going down, but there is obviously still good availability. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple other ones, I know we have ESO and uh, Elator CH, both package material available for prop shipment. If uh, anyone out there, there's there's interest in those. I know we've, we've been pushing those for a couple months now and, and hope to do a bit more with those. Absolutely. Any other uh, any other big products or things that I'm forgetting? Um you know, we, we've got a, a, a big basket of products. Um, I don't think you missed any of the real new ones. Um, you know, the amines, uh, T-E-A, M-E-A, D-E-A. These are semi-new products for us. Yep. Um, certainly interesting. Isobutanol, butanol, um, 2-E-H, you know, uh, certainly uh, have those products um, from our Middle Eastern partner. Not a newer product, but um, one that we're, we're growing, uh, formaldehyde, uh, which is kind of funny. It's, it's one that TCC has historically done a, a lot of and, um, you know, kind of kind of got back into the fold more recently. So formaldehyde has been a, been a newer newer one for us. Um, well, <laughs> I guess <laughs> it's, it's, it, newish. It, 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 it was one of yeah, our free. first three products when we started the company. So methanol, urea, formaldehyde. Mm-hmm. Which are still three big ones for us. And obviously, you do most of the formaldehyde, and Javi does a lot of the amines. So, if, if you guys know AJ or Javi, feel free to reach out to either of them or whoever your sales contact is. You know, we, we're pretty open and, and easy to collaborate internally. So, feel free to reach out to whoever your TCC contact is for, for any of those products. Uh, event shows and conferences. Obviously, I think the nice part of the holiday season it's it's usually pretty lighter on on trade shows and conferences and things like that. People take a couple weeks to take some time off and, and catch up on things for year end. Um, couple holiday lunches this week in uh, New York and other separate organizations, but I think they do a good job doing them at the same time. So if people are flying in or traveling, they uh, they, they can do them the same weekend. Um, Javi, big plans this weekend. What are the uh, what are the upcoming lunches going on here? Well, we have tomorrow the New England Chemical Association lunch. Uh, that's going to be at the Plaza Hotel. Uh, we will have, we'll be sponsoring a table, so we'll, we'll be with uh, some of our customers. I heard it's a big event, around 350 people show up. So looking forward, it's going to be my first one, so I'm looking forward, looking forward to it. Yeah, I think we have six or seven people going, and obviously customers yeah. and things like that. Yes. Did I approve that expense? I don't yes, know. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I have the email. It's too late now. <laughs> no, I think that was that was spearheaded by Mr. Ray Altenberger. So. Yeah, he knows about expenses. So. <laughs> <laughs> he knows about lunches, too. He yeah. loves a lunch. He loves a good lunch. And then a couple more next week as well, obviously. Yeah, we have the Sogma. That's going to be on Monday, December 10th. And the Resimix Holiday Lunch on, uh, on Tuesday, this uh, December 11th. Just that word. I feel like you love the word luncheon. I love it. I love to say <laughs> luncheon. I mean, it's, it's a new one for me. I knew lunch, but not luncheon. I, I, I like it. It's like it's like the classy form of lunch. Like you know, I just want to lunch. We're gonna have, we're gonna have luncheon. Luncheon, lunch in. yeah. But I can't do, like only, like you say it just in a way that I can't. Luncheon. Yes, yeah. See, I can't. Yeah. We should we should we should have a luncheon today, but I mean, I mean yeah. <laughs> I had to Google because I didn't know what the difference was between a luncheon and a lunch. So what, 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 what is the difference? It's a formal. More of a formal. It's lunch. a formal lunch. Yeah. And like some of these events have dress codes, so we have to have to dress up for it. You know, like this. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> What happens if you eat at like one, two o'clock in the afternoon, or you have millennials? Is it a brunchin? <laughs> brunchin. Now, brunchin. Now we are talking. <laughs> now we are I talking. Don't know. If there's mimosas, then it's a brunchin. Then it's a brunchin. <laughs> Add mimosas and uh, bloody marys to the mix, and you got yourself a brunchin. As TCC's resident millennial, I'm going to approve the word brunchin. All right. Yeah. Like that. Maybe we host. A brunch in 2019. See, now we're, now we're on to something here. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's the cameras. The cameras are bringing out the creativity here. We've got some good lighting going on in here. It's Sounds like fun. Yeah. All right, so keep it posted. TCC's first annual brunch and keep, keep an eye out for it. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is the expense approved? It's, well, it's approved. All right. See, we got, <laughs> done. We got it on uh, recording here. We didn't even have to give you a number. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> The sky's the limit, you know. <laughs> go for it. It's a brunch and it's a first. Yeah, Let's go. Get a blank check, Benny. Pray That's for right. Rob's. Pray for Rob's checkbook. <laughs> um, and obviously, a couple couple of trade shows and things like that coming up in 2019. I think we'll we'll talk about a little bit more of that in January to kind of kick off the uh, the 2019 season. Biggest thing really coming up is the the AFPM 2019. Um, for anyone listening, we will have our third annual uh, cocktail party at AFPM. It'll be Sunday, March 24th. 
I think the official invite and info is going to go out next week. So any of our uh, our podcast listeners are the getting the inside scoop here with the uh, the, the first announcement of the official uh, cocktail party, and, and we'll obviously have our whole team down there. It's always it's going to be a blast, good event. And then wrapping things up, uh, obviously December. I know TCC likes to do as much as we can with with giving back to the community, both with time and, and donations and and monetary aspects and things like that. So I know we have a, a couple projects coming up for, for December. We're looking forward to do a little bit of giving back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, instead of, you know, giving each other silly gifts or something like that, we're going to take that money and we're going to give it to uh, some local charities. Um, you know, I think um, Javi can comment on the MLK Center uh, a little bit is who's one of our chosen charities. Yes, so we have two charities uh, this year. Number one is the MLK Center. That's a community they serve breakfast, uh, they do pantry, they serve the community, and uh, I do volunteer there myself. In or, Newport. In yep. Newport, Rhode Island. And also we have the Chris Collins Foundation, that's a, 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 a foundation that focuses on taking out the stigma about talking about depression and anxiety. So that's uh, that's also a nice foundation, it's also local. So we, uh, we're doing a lot of work with them. So. Um, so we will have those those charities. Uh, Javi volunteers his time at the MLK Center relatively often, and uh, that's correct. They don't just feed anybody lunch or brunch. They, you know, it's it's needy people yeah. in the Newport community that uh, that need you know clothing or, mm -hmm. or some food or warm a warm meal. Um, you would think in Newport where there's you know these gorgeous mansions and everything that yeah. there's not that type of a community, but it's one of the more um, poor communities in Rhode Island. So. Um, and of course, the Chris Collins Foundation is, you know, as Javi mentioned, it's it's to bring out um, awareness about anxiety and depression, mainly in, in kids, teenagers. Uh, mm -hmm. It's considered a weakness if you have a, a mental issue. So um, they're giving a forum, you know, a, 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 a chance for these kids to talk about it because, uh, you know, there is a lot of uh, depression uh, and, and even suicide. Um, that's going on a lot higher rates than, than the past. And, um, you know, whether it's the way that society is or phones or social media, it's having an impact on humans. And uh, so we like to do our best to give to worthy causes locally. And I think these are two wonderful causes. Yeah, and we'll put a note uh, in the, the email view from Jamestown mm -hmm. either tomorrow or Monday um, with if anyone, if anybody wants to send a check or a box of canned goods or anything like that, you're obviously more than welcome. We, we'd love any contribution that anyone uh, out there would like to make, um, you know, just supporting the cause and, and giving back to a, a good organization. So we'll have some info on there. Um, obviously, by no means have to, but if anyone's looking for a good way to, to give back, these are definitely two good, uh, worthy foundations for it. We would appreciate it. Wrapping things up, anything, anything else? Well, um, you know, looking forward to the to Christmas this year and uh, Happy Hanukkah um, to everyone out there celebrating Hanukkah. It's a it is a wonderful time of year, and you have to embrace it for um, you know the loving and caring and and spending time with family that it is, and and sort of get the Christmassy music that's been playing since uh, Halloween out of your mind and, and embrace it. You know, I I'm trying to to get rid of the bah humbug in in my life and and really enjoy the season for what it is yeah today was my first day i was traveling earlier in the week so today was my first day back in the office this week and i walk in and there's three christmas trees and <laughs> carrie's music still carrie's computer still playing christmas music i'm like wow it's, it's christmas time in here now <laughs> yep it's the most wonderful time <laughs> of the it's, year. it's tough to get that bah humbug out when the same songs play over and over all day. On, but I'm going to try to subscribe with <laughs> yeah, your please thought do. process and get rid of the bah humbug. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the, the, the big box stores and, you know, all the nonstop advertisements tend to ruin it. But, uh, you know, it is a time to slow down uh, over Christmas and spend time with family, and uh, which can also be stressful. <laughs> <laughs> How are we on our Christmas shopping? Are we oh, I haven't even started okay, yet. Yeah, okay, good. Me either. Glad we're on the same page. I think I'm done. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Preparation. No, I think uh, my wife is giving me a hard time. She says, ah, oh, this year, let's not be last minute. And I'm like, yeah, let's talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can have uh, George put a little like Christmas lick or something together for this intro. We'll do a little holiday-themed yeah. podcast intro. Yeah. That would so be good. Keep, keep an eye out for that. And then Javier, looking forward to spending some time, obviously, back home. Yes, yeah, looking forward to be back home. 
Plus, it's hot. <laughs> it's summer there, you know. Yeah. It is summer in so, the southern hemisphere. Yeah. What are summer. the What are the temps back home right now? Uh, so right now we'll be in around eighties. Oh, oh my god! god. Yeah. Yeah. And I live close to the beach. Can I come? <laughs> More than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> TCC remote holiday at the <laughs> Fernandez household. All right, everyone, we appreciate you uh, sitting down and, and taking some time and listening to, uh, obviously, the December View from Jamestown podcast recording. Obviously, the podcast is, is available on the chemco.com slash podcast, as well as any of the, uh, the mainstream networks where you can stream podcasts from. Uh, feel free to scroll down on the podcast and check out the show notes. We'll have links to the different products we spoke about and, and some of the foundations and things like that. So wherever you're listening, feel free to scroll down and, and check out some of those URLs. And we will catch you in 2019. Merry Christmas. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.